Before we even start thinking about ranking high, we need to make sure that we understand the parsing rules on this encounter first. So here we go. The healing in phase 3 does not count towards ranks and parsies, and this makes sense since it's preventing healers from griefing the raid and overhealing too much in order to chase parsies. However, this doesn't affect us casters and boomies at all. What we need to know though is that the damage done to swarm scarabs is removed. These are the little adds that spawn throughout the phase 2 when the boss is submerged and is chasing people with spikes. If you decide to help your guild and DPS them down, just make sure you won't accidentally proc Lunar Eclipse and more importantly, your Trinket proc or something that is not being counted, but more on that later. I was about to say that another thing that we need to know is that the damage done to Nerubian Barrow in Phase 3 is excluded except the off tanks and the damage done to them is kept at 900k damage, but they decided to change the parsing rules in the middle of this recording. So according to this, the damage restrictions in phase 3 is gone, which is a good thing for us in order to get some nice starfall splash damage that is going to be counted from now on. However, they also lowered the cap to add to 600k. So once you pass the threshold, there's no point doing more damage to them if your goal is to parse. But make sure to always check out the recent parsing rules in case of more future changes. As you can see from all my kills, I was already close to the 600k damage on the borrowers, having the damage to borrower around 550k twice, and that was with Moonfire multidotting, using Starfall, and occasionally single target them down during the submerge phase or once in a while when it's called is needed. However, this was also without any damage in phase 3. So with some additional Starfall in phase 3, I can see we can crawl dangerously close to the cap, but we should be fine if you pay attention to what you are doing unless you are getting more submerge phases or focusing on the ads too much. This guide will be focusing mostly on the quote normal strategy with one submerge phase and this is perfectly viable to achieve the 99 at least in the first few weeks. However, after several weeks at the end of phase 3 when people will be close to their full best in slow gear, I can see the potential of some parsing cheese strats emerging. The heroism on pool burn and skip the submerge phase 2 is a real possibility of becoming the new meta later on as there are a few of these skills already with perfectly healthy and balanced composition obviously focusing on rather the Lich King motto bring the player not the class. But if you are in an average guild chances are high this is not going to happen for you anytime soon so for now this is not what I will be focusing on too much. Alright now let's talk about pre-voting. Fortunately for us, there isn't anything special happening here that could ruin our pre-plot. So we start like majority of encounters, pre a potion and a second potion can be used in combat. Best to be coupled with other cooldowns such as hyperspeed exciters, heroism or onion trinkets and only at the start of the lunar phase. Now comes the question, what kind of potion we should use? Potion of wild magic or potion of speed for the pre-plot? It depends on your gear setup what are your crit and haste values, and also a bit of a personal preference. During the phase 1 and phase 2, we were using potion of wild magic to get to lunar eclipse faster. If you had some crazy amounts of crit at the end of phase 2, chances are high that the sim was already saying the potion of speed for prepot is a DPS increase as that happened to me. So according to sim, I'm supposed to use potion of speed for prepots, but why is that? As we more reliably get into lunar sooner, because of higher haste and crit levels, getting close to their soft caps, haste becomes stronger than crit as your starfire was already critting in lunar, so casting it faster brings more benefit. I would advise sim everything for your gear setup to see what's better for you. However, I'm still using potion of wild magic for prepod, even though in my current gear setup the potion of speed should pull slightly ahead in terms of DPS. Why? Because 1. It's my personal preference and I'm potion of wild magic lover. 2. I like my first trends, starfall and moonfire to benefit from the extra spell power. And 3. I like the extra crit to get to the lunar eclipse faster as there's nothing worse than casting wrath forever without frocking lunar. But most importantly, 4. The only reason the potion of speed seems slightly higher with the higher crit rating on gear that is relying you are going to proc Lunar Eclipse fairly soon, so first few Starfire casts in Lunar Eclipse will still benefit from the Potion of Speed duration. However, since we are a Casino RNG class, this might not even happen. 
If you don't proc Lunar Eclipse, it's pretty much a wasted pre prod as it doesn't really help on the rough cast at all, and that just feels bad. So I like to eliminate any RNG elements if it's possible, and by the way that's why I'm hyped for the Kata version of Moonkin. So for now, I'm still using Potion of Wild Magic. But in terms of parsing, it's perfectly viable to achieve the 99 regardless of what potion you decide to use. This is not something that will make or break your road to 99. Alright, so pour is about to happen and you pre pot it. As I've mentioned in the previous guides, you can skip the Fairy Fire on pool and save a global cooldown if you have both Shadow Priest keeping Misery and a Feral Druid keeping his Fairy Fire. Just make sure it is up by someone, as we are losing our own personal DPS due to improved fairy fire talent. That's why my first global cooldown is usually Moonfire to get the 200 critical strike rating buff as soon as possible. If you pre pot it, this first Moonfire will also snapshot the wild magic potion spell power, which you will even extend during your first lunar eclipse. I'm following the Moonfire with Insect Swarm as the second global cooldown, because there is no Harrison on pool as we are saving it for phase 3. This also gives me a chance to proc the trinkets such as Flare of the Heavens, Dying Curse, Ponderous Plea, etc. before Trends and Starfall so they can both benefit from it. And yes, I'm still doing Insect Swarm for Solar Eclipse as it still seems higher for my gear setup. However, after several weeks when I progress with my gear, I might skip Insect Swarm altogether and keep it as a movement filler. Then, I cast Trends in close proximity of the boss to minimize their travel time to the target. Make sure you are casting trends while you have Potion of Wild Magic. It's not worth it to delay and save trends for heroism, as usually they will come off cooldown again, so you can do two Force of Nature casts. The second trends is best to use right before heroism for phase 3, so they can benefit from it to squeeze in a little bit of extra DPS. You can use Starfall before continuing with normal Eclipse rotation, starting with Wrath cast to fish for Lunar Eclipse, but more about Starfall options in a bit. If you are using Heroism on pool, however, trying to skip the submerge phase, then make sure trends are out before the Heroism cast, so it should be the second global cooldown after Moonfire, or even before it as the first global cooldown depending on how unpatient your guild shamans are. From now, it's just continuing with Eclipse rotation, using hyperspeed accelerators on the first Lunar Eclipse, and any onion trinkets as well for some juicy Starfire nuke. I'm using simple macro for this, that I just pop and start casting Starfire immediately. Alright, now phase 1 tips. So if your goal is to parse, then you need to take advantage of every single little opportunity to min-max, squeeze in a few more extra casts and keep your uptime close to 100%. In order to do this, we want to avoid movement during the fight. So one such a small and underrated opportunity is planning ahead and the positioning, as it's an important part of the pool. You should use the first couple of global cooldowns that you spend on instant casts like Fairy Fire, Moonfire, Insect Swarm, Trance or Starfall to move to a position where you can stand throughout majority of the phase 1 and can maintain the position without any range or movement issues. These first few instant casts should be more than enough to get you there and proceed with Eclipse Rotation. To achieve this, we need to know what position is the best to minimize any unnecessary movement prior to pull. So don't get too close and avoid standing in melee as you generate more threat this way and you need to reposition again for the submerge phase to avoid breaking the tanking patches in case you are the target. So plan ahead, keep your distance and know where the boss is being dragged few seconds before the submerge. If it's being dragged to one of the sides like we are doing, then position yourself more towards the side where Anub is being dragged not to get any unnecessary range or movement issues. Now with Starfall, you actually have a couple of options. Either do it on pool, or wait approximately 20 seconds before the first wave of adds spawn. The consensus of the Druid Discord is that delaying the Starfall for the adds is better in terms of DPS, and I really wanted to try last night since all my kills are with Starfalls on pool. I managed to do it, and it was solid, but unfortunately we wiped and ruined our 50-50 attempt, and next try I accidentally Starfalled on pool again out of pure muscle memory. So yeah, unfortunately I don't have a kill with delayed starfall, but as you can see both are perfectly viable to achieve the 99, however both options have their own advantages and disadvantages, so let's have a look. Starfalling on pool. The advantages are, you are doing more single target nuke on the boss, which might be more helpful if you are struggling to push him into phase 3 with only one submerge phase. Chances are high that your procs like trinkets or tailoring cloak will proc with first few casts 
So oftentimes star for one pool benefits way more from these pros than the delayed one. Oftentimes you can as well squeeze one more extra star fall that might not be possible to do if you decide to delay, which will eventually outweigh the DPS of the delayed option. You can also line up your star fall perfectly for the second and third wave of ads. And since you are hitting purely Anu and not the ads for the first star fall, you are left with more room for maneuvering with multidotting and star falling ads later on and is a safer option if you are having trouble with the 600k damage cap on the borrowers. The disadvantages are that it might be slightly less in terms of DPS if you are not passing the 600k threshold with the delay starfall on ads and can't squeeze in an extra starfall compared to this option. So these are also advantages of the delay starfall option. If you don't have to worry about the 600k damage cap or the 20 seconds delay doesn't affect the number of starfalls compared to both options, it's most likely pulling ahead in terms of DPS just because of the splash damage is being too strong. The disadvantages of the delay starfall though are that you will have more problems with the damage cap on the barbers, might cross the 600k line which will ultimately hinder you. You might also miss the second wave of ads since the starfall is on 1 minute cooldown and the ads are spa spawning in 45 seconds intervals. This way, you are star falling right at the end of the second wave, however, if your guild's cleave is too strong and the ads are being killed too fast, chances are high that you might miss the window as starfall might still be on cooldown by the time the ads are killed already. On the other hand, if you are killing the ads too slow, you might be star falling the ads when the swarm scars will already appear and they can soak some of the stars which are not gonna be counted. Also, this way you are using the second starfall at the end of the second wave of ads at the phase 1 to phase 2 transition. So you can also become target of the spikes, which might make you go out of range of the barbers, so some of the stars will ultimately miss the target. But as I said, both options are perfectly viable on your road to 99. I actually made all my 4 99 kills with starfall on pool and each kill was in top 50 world ranking. Regarding on what option you decide to choose in terms of timing, just make sure you are in range of the target and the ads, especially if you are using Leap of Focus for some reason. I recommend using any sort of weak or as warning for Starfall range. I'm also using Mouse over Macro for Star Night Bomb together with Starfall as they are on the same cooldown. So if you are doing the same, make sure you are mouse overing the target when casting Starfall. Regarding the mechanics, there isn't anything to worry about in phase 1 perhaps except the penetrating call that can kill you. So you can use bark skin to reduce the damage, but this should never happen in phase 1 and you actually want to be a penetrating call target as it can proc your Oaken Frenzy for some nice DPS increase. And last tip for phase 1 is to multidot the barbers if you are already using the Idol of Lunar Fury, 2 piece tier 9 and Glyph of Moonfire. Multidotting should be a DPS increase for you in this case, but make sure to double check it on sims for your gear setup and also don't forget to multidop only if the target will survive full duration of the dot. You can also leverage the Moonfire extending trick on Anoop if your ads are not cleaved too fast and you saw the Moonfire snapshot with some spell power out of Trinket or Tailoring Cloak proc. If you Moonfire the boss with some juicy proc and then the ads are coming just as the Moonfire will be soon running out, you can Moonfire one of the ads, then use free Starfire cast to extend the juicy Moonfire on the boss, Moonfire another ad and extend again. This way you are both multidotting and keeping the higher spell power Moonfire on both alive, but do this only if multidotting targets are alive for the duration of the Moonfire and it aligns with your eclipses, meaning this is not worth it to extend the Moonfire with Starfire cast during your solar eclipse. Just make sure you don't decide to go ham with multidotting and starfalling on the ads right when they spawn and haven't even reached the tank yet as it's easy to overthread on these. So let's move into phase 2. The boss is being dragged away, will submerge and start chasing someone with spike soon. Depending on your guild's damage and cleave, make sure to keep DPSing the barbers as they are still being counted towards the parses in phase 2. Make sure you are still paying attention to where the boss submerge and where are the next patches. Surviving and positioning are the name of the game in phase 2. Always expect you can be the next target of the spikes and it will come in straight line for you, breaking any patches on the way, so position yourself accordingly. I'm not gonna go more further into this topic, we are druids, we have dash and rocket boots at our disposal, 
so save them for this occasion in case you are the target. Once the barbers are dead, you can help to DPS the little scarab adds, just make sure you will never get hit by any of them, as the debuff you will get will most likely kill you if you carry it over in the last phase. Also keep in mind, these are not being counted towards your parse, so make sure you are tracking the timers when the boss will reappear, timers of your cooldowns and internal cooldowns of your trinkets or cloak enchant if you are a tailor. So depending on the timers, you might want to slow down and perhaps even semi AFK and stop DPS for last couple of seconds to not waste any important procs that might be missing for a single target boss nuke. You want to have everything ready when the boss reappear, meaning you can proc Lunar Eclipse together with trinkets and tailoring procs while using hyperspeed exciters and don't waste these in phase 2 on scarabs that are not being even counted. Your starfall should align nicely with the spawning of another wave of ads after the boss reappeared, so use it on them. Which brings us to last phase. The boss will soon reach the 30% HP and the leeching sword will start, while your guild will most likely use heroism at this point to start the DPS race. If your trains came off cooldown somewhere in phase 2, save them for this occasion and use second force of nature cast right at the transition to last phase. You want to time your train just few seconds before so they can benefit from the heroism cast. At this time as well, you want to use the macro of cancelling all stamina effects on you, reducing the amount boss will be healed as these are not really helping you to survive in phase 3 anyway. We are also using mighty frost protection potion in the same macro that will help us survive and make the phase 3 a little bit smoother. If you are really confident that you will survive without the frost potion and you feel like it's not really needed, you can of course use potion of speed or wild magic during your lunar eclipse which will be far more beneficial in terms of DPS. However, that DPS is a no DPS and it means game over for your parse. So I use Mighty Frost Protection Potion on all of my kills and manage to do the 99s just fine. It's also nice if you try to time this with your Lunar Eclipse so you can pop everything on the Heroism cast. I'm mostly treating Phase 3 as a single target DPS race with passive Starfall Cleave. I wasn't multidotting the ads since they weren't counted in Phase 3 in any of my kills. But even if they will be from now on, I don't think it's worth it at this point, especially since I'm under the effect of heroism, and we are even using DK armies and letting the ads to borrow. Regarding your position, don't stand in melee as you can be high on threat and in case your tank died and before his combat rest, you might get clapped in a second and one shot as the next target. If you keep your distance, you might kite the boss with rocket boots and buy a few seconds before he's being taunted again. Also, if another Starfall came off cooldown, make sure you are not popping it right away again when the new set of ads is just spawning, or you might get aggro on them and die instantly. Wait a few seconds before they are tanked by the tanks or armies of the dead before popping the Starfall. The only thing that can kill you otherwise is the Leeching Swarm if your passive group healer in form of Shadow Priest or Shaman died in your group, or you will get the Penetrating Cult. The only thing you can do is to pop bar skin when you see you got the penetrating cult, or use hellstone if you see the next tick might kill you. Other than that, you either heal yourself and grief your bars, or you will trust your healers. I'm usually going with the second option as our guild is using the weak aura with penetrating cult numbers on targets, so in reality healing in phase 3 is really easy, you're just keeping one target alive and ignoring the rest. Regarding the glyphs, I was using the phase 3 default trio of glyphs Moonfire, Starfall and Starfire for all of my kills. Nothing comes even close to any of these three except one possible alternative just for this encounter and that is the glyph of focus that could be somewhat viable as an alternative. If you decide to use focus, it's the glyph of Moonfire that needs to be replaced, so the focus, Starfall and Starfire is the second best option. It actually seems slightly higher compared to the default trial, for example this is a sim for 5 minute duration fight which on paper and 5 target should be around 140 dps increase, however the sim is counting that there are always 5 targets available that you can hit with starfall, which is not the case in reality nor is the downtime counted so the starfall can't be used on cooldown as the sim is suggesting. This with also the range factor means that it's most likely not a dps increase. But it's a possible alternative. Just make sure you are always in range of your targets if you decide to use it. Because if you won't hit with just few stars because of range issues, it's already a major DPS loss compared to Moonfire, Starfall and Starfire. 
One more thing though, if you decide to use focus, you are not using Leaf of Moonfire anymore, so therefore the whole multi roting is not worth it. Meaning, it's purely single target close range nuke and passive clip with Starfall. Also, if you are sitting in your tier 8 gear and you don't have the Idol of Lunar Fury, you will most likely benefit more from using Leaf of Insect Swarm instead of Moonfire. I'm not gonna go further into this topic, make sure to check out how to use the dots in phase 3 video which I'm linking in the description down below where I've explained this. And these are the talents I use for all of my kills so far, it's my default single target build for TORGC, uh, it's not worth it to hurricane deaths, therefore definitely not worth it to spend 2 talents in Gale Wings. I also skip talents like Moonglow, Dream State, Intensity or Omen of Clarity as mana shouldn't be an issue with the higher crit rating on gear in phase 3. But I'm also sometimes blessed to innovate myself or even find myself in a group with Race to Shaman to benefit from the mana tie totem. If you don't have the same perks and are struggling with mana, then I suggest to shift few talents around, but it shouldn't be really needed. The only choices left that can help out on single target damage are Genesis, Brambles and Ulkin Frenzy, which are free to shift those around as you like. But Genesis is pretty weak on paper in terms of DPS, Brambles and Ulkin Frenzy are much better options. Although Ulkin Frenzy can be strong in TOGC, it's not proking much on this specific encounter as you don't want to get hit by any of the ads, so it's pretty much only penetrating call that can trigger it. Therefore, I'm rather going for consistency in Brambles. That's pretty much it for today. Uh, if you like the content, make sure to like and subscribe. And thank you for watching. See you next time. Hmm?